I keep getting asked the same damn question over and over again on Facebook. I just got my license. What can you recommend to me for my first bike? So for this video, I'm just gonna answer that question once and for all. Roll or intro? On the most economical end of this list, I have chosen the Honda Wave 125. This thing goes for almost nothing. It is dirt cheap as hell and back again with an insane fuel economy of close to 50 km per litre. The benefit to buying an underbone like this is a simple semi-automatic transmission, meaning you can shift without needing a clutch, making it incredibly easy for new riders to get around town with. What sets the Wave 125 apart from other underbones is its incredible popularity almost everywhere in the world. You can even find them in some European cities like London, and it has so much popularity it even gets copied in China with a one-to-one -one interchangeable parts as originals, making it a bike you can get fixed literally anywhere. This is going to sound really biased considering I once rode an FZ16, but the FZ150FI is not the same bike. Even though it looks the same, it is the fuel-injected successor to the FZ16 and solves many of the FZ16's problems. Despite not having a 149cc engine that is no longer as powerful as the FZ16 by a small margin, it now has fuel injection that makes maintenance of the bike even simpler and improves the fuel economy even further. The FZ150FI, while no longer having the same fat good looking exhaust pipe, still retains the macho looking midsection and improves on the quality of the plastics and materials used in its exterior construction. The FZ150FI is a great commuter, with a 12 litre tank with a range of approximately 380 km, making it helpful for the new rider that is too goddamn lazy to fill it up every other day. The bike is light and flickable making it easy to get around dense traffic in the city centres. However, it has lost the ability to kickstart with the introduction of its new fuel injected engine. Yet the pathetic small sized and fast discharging batteries still exist and could face a problem for anyone that does not operate the bike daily. The Honda MSX125 Gram has probably single-handedly put more smiles on people's faces than any other contemporary motorcycle in the entire world. This bite-sized bike, with its low seat and punchy 125cc single-cylinder engine, gives it the excitement and freedom of a real motorcycle, without the intimidation of one because of its user-friendly approachability. This inexpensive bike, while not having much of a long range to get around with, does have impressive fuel economy. Its featherweight, and simple to handle, making it great for riders that are shorter or do not have the physical strength to muscle larger, heavier bikes. It does however fall short as a day-to-day -day commuter because of its lack of seating space and weight limits, making it a hassle to carry a pillion or luggage or even heavy set riders. The TE125 is one of the rare few sub 200cc road legal dual sports and supermotos to grace new riders in Singapore. If price isn't a concern, which it shouldn't be anyway if you're buying a dual sport, what sets it apart from its competitors like the KLX 150 from Kawasaki or the Suzuki DR125SM is its punchy 125cc two stroke engine. Two stroke! Not many two stroke bikes are legal to be ridden on the streets anymore despite their overwhelming power and capabilities. Its inclusion of Brembo calipers is a major plus, giving new riders the confidence in their braking system, and while many rookie riders fresh out of riding school are used to a 5-speed gearbox, the TE125 6-speed gearbox should be easy to pick up in no time, and affords the rider a smoother gear shifting experience with efficient power delivery along the line. If you are going to buy a sport bike, you will definitely want to get one with the most performance within its class. 
and the KDM RC200 is the one that fits the bill. The sub 200cc market for sport bikes is pretty meh, most veering towards the economical and easy to use side of things. But the KDM RC200 is none of that with the company's ready to race philosophy. Its 200cc single cylinder engine delivers the most torque and power unmatched by any other sport bike to this category. Including the R15 from Yamaha and the CBR150R from Honda. While its plastic fairings does feel cheap compared to the smooth finish of the R15, they are exquisitely good looking and aggressive with an aggressive riding posture, allowing a better crouch when at high speeds on the track. Its higher footpack ground clearance and front brake setup allows for impressively sharper turns and feats like power drifts. Despite its hefty price tag, with which you could probably buy two FZ150s with, it is a price worth paying for performance and style. So if you feel my list was helpful, do give me a thumbs up Otherwise, give me a thumbs down and leave your reasons in the comments below. And of course, do remember to subscribe if you haven't done so for more motorcycle content in Singapore. Or catch up with me on Facebook and Twitter. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.